with a lot of data that the Lord has given us. And we can see we are all putting on masks. It is very important because of coronavirus. But when you go to Kisumu, it is not coronavirus. It is COVID-19. So be careful when you go there to name the epidemic that has come to us. Now, I'm going to start off with the topic on surface area. Date is very important. Date is very important. So always have your date when you are starting on. The topic is on surface area. Surface area. The key word there is surface and area. Surface, we started learning in class uh, 6, where we learned area of different faces. So that is where the word is coming. The surface, the sur and face. The faces that we learned in class 6, in class 7, about sur the surfaces, which were square, rectangle, triangle. When we came to class 7, now we were putting this together and they form a three-dimension figure. The three-dimension figure is now where we are going to get the surfaces that are making those, those figures. That is why we are going to learn, we learn about the faces, the edges, the vertices and when we come to we came to class seven we learned about the surface area of a rectangular figure which we called as a cuboid then we had a square which we called as a cube then we also learned in class seven about the surface area of a cylinder and a cylinder is just a tin like that. And this cylinder has that face, which we call the curved face, and this face here, which we call the circular face. So for today, what we are introducing in class 8 is surface area of a wedge. Surface area of a wedge. The same wedge is also called a triangular a triangular prism so we are learning the surface area of a triangular prism or a wedge already we've talked about faces and you can see these are faces that are making the cuboid you should know those faces that when they are put together they form a three-dimensional figure when I say three dimension, I mean it has a height, a base, and a length. So this is the net, although it is in two parts, but when we form it like that, when we form it like that, you will find that this now will cover to make a cuboid, a rectangular container, a rectangular tank, and even the top of your desk is a cuboid. This box here is a cuboid, an example of a cuboid. Your textbook is a cuboid. My piece of chalk box is also a cuboid. The classroom is also a cuboid. The cupboard is also a cuboid. Those are examples of cuboid. Provided you know the faces that are making that cuboid, you can work out the surface area of the cuboid. Now, my main topic is on a wedge. An example of a wedge is a roof. The top of the roof is example of a wedge. The net of a wedge is this one here. This is the net of a wedge. And if you can see, are you seeing rectangles? Yes. Are we seeing rectangles? Yes. We are having one, two, three rectangles are you seeing the triangles yes the triangles meaning that 
the weight is made of three rectangular rectangular faces and two triangular faces so when we are getting surface area we are going to get the surface area of the rectangles we get the surface area of the two triangles we add these together to give us a wedge or a triangular prism now when we are making out to get one i want to remind you that always when you find a, a rectangular prism my drawing may not be good check out first you know the faces and already the faces are there then i want you to note that this face here must be equal to this face this face must be equal to that face the same with this side this face equals to that H, this face edge edge thank you edge this edge is equal to this this edge is also equal to that because last year or 2018 they brought the the, the, the net of a wedge and you'll find that this edge was longer than this one this edge here was shorter than this one that is not going to give you a wedge or a triangular prism so you must know that these edges must come together so that they form now the top of the roof the top of the roof we say that surface area is about the faces that is why we have surface the faces that we've learned are <coughs> about the area of those faces now when i have the measurements like here if i have this one is 10 this one is 8 this one is 10 then this one is 20 i know very well that it is supposed to be isosceles <laughs> of the triangle you have 10 centimeters see 10 centimeters and 16 centimeters and we want to find the surface area not very well that this is the part which is 10 this is also 10 then this part here is now 16 so when i'm finding the surface area of this i'll have this one being the same as this part will be the width then this part here will be the length of this first face up here the first face here that is why i'll take now this 10 times 20 the 10 times 20 because this is the part which is 20 so the length or the edge here 10 will measure the same as that part so it will give me now 10 times 20 then this edge which is also 10 will give me times 20 because this part must be equal to this part here so i'll again have 10 times 20. then now this edge here this part is 16. the blue part here is 16. so that 16 will again be times 20. so i'll have 16 times 20. I've worked the area of all the rectangle. This rectangle, which yes. is this A, being the same with this, is going to be 10 yes. times 20. This part also, which is the same as this, will be 10 again times 20. Then this part, which is 16, will be length times width, which is 16 times 20. 20. Those are area of the rectangle. Then we come to area of the triangle and in area of a triangle we don't talk about length and width we talk about half, half base, base times height. height do we have the height here are we given the height there no class are we given the height no, no. so we are going to get the height being that that it is an isosceles triangle, triangle. then when we divide it into two it will give us a right angle triangle, triangle. So this is going to be 8, then the longest side is 10, so when we use Pythagorean theory where we have 
a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So I'm given the hypotenuse, which is c, and I'm given the base, which is h. So I'm going to have now c squared minus base squared is equal to height squared. And that is why I'm going to have now 10 squared minus 8, eight squared. squared should be equal to a squared which is going to be 100, 100 minus 64. 64, very good, is equal to a squared. Square. That will be 36. 36, is equal to a squared. Then I find the square root of all, then a is going to be equal to what? 6. six. So the height is six. 6. And the base is not now 8 only. We are going to take the base of all these, the triangle here. The base of the triangle, which was 16. 16. So I'm going to have a half times 16 and times the height, which is 6. six. Not, the not the hypotenuse, please don't take the longest side. It is a half base times height. height. <clears throat> so that is why we were to use Pythagorean theory to get the height. After getting the height, the base will remain at 16 now. And then we multiply by that to get the area of the triangle. And because these triangles are also the same, we mm. are going to multiply by what? 2. By 2. So when I get this area of the three triangles and area of the two, uh, the area of the three rectangles and the area of the two triangles, I add all and I get the area the surface area of a wedge or a triangular prism. prism. In the exam, we are normally given different uh, questions. And remember, any three-dimensional figure, you can be asked volume, at the same time you can be asked the surface area. area. Three-dimensional figure, where I have the height, the base, and the length. The height, the base, and the length. So I have some questions here, just to give as example. Created the question where hmm, I don't know how to draw. Hey, where is going to draw from? So, come, come, come. This way. Simple as such. One, two, three. Can you clap for him? Thank you very much for the music. That is great. Thank you. So we have been given now to get the surface area of this figure. That one will take us back to the surface area of our cuboid. And you will must know the faces that are making this figure here. I have this face. I have this face which I'll take to that point. I'll have this face. I'll have this face. I'll have this face. And I'll have this face here. So the only faces that I'm going to multiply by two is this face and the other one here. Then this face here with this one here then when i take it this end i'll have this face here i multiply by two so those are faces i can get or i'll just get the face of the other face and that length times width that one is taking us back to a cuboid now i have also this one here That one is taking us to the wage that we've learned. But this time, the wage, this one is an isosceles, where this side is equal to that. But this one here is a right angle. So in this, when I'm given that this is, uh, this is 4 and this is 3, then I have this one as 15. I must get this part here. Remember, I took 10 times 20, 
This other 10 times 20, and then 16 times 20. So I'm taking all the lengths of the rectangle, triangle, I'm multiplying by the length of a rectangle. So in this one, I'll have, yes, this part, which is 4 times 15. I'll have 3 times 15. Then I must get this part here for me to get the area of the third rectangle. And I'll use Pythagorean theory where I have a squared plus b squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. So I'll have this one as a 5. So I'll have again 5 times 20. Are we together with all the lengths of the triangles? Yes. When we are getting the wedge, we must have the lengths, all the lengths of the triangle and we multiply by the length, one length that we are given of a rectangle. So after these three, three rectangles, then we get the area of the, the triangle. Where again we are having a half base times height. So here I have the height and I have the base. So I'm just going to have a half times three and times four. And when I have that, it means that I get the area of the triangle and I multiply by 2. So when I multiply by 2, I have the area of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have the faces, the 5 faces of a rectangle. You will not miss questions on surface area, which will come with volume. You must get them. Surface area. You must get the question on surface area and it will give you three marks. So can you check on that? Either of a cylinder, which we learned in class seven, or a wedge, the top of a roof, the triangular prism. Please check on the length of the triangle and know the faces. That is why we are told surface, surface area, area of the faces. So. We have some other questions on that. When you go home or where you are seated at home, please get to the question paper, any question paper, and only work on surface area, surface area, surface area.